today's video we are doing another festive bake. We are making gorgeous traditional mince pies. There are so many variations on the filling for this recipe, but what I really love about it is that you can use whatever you have in your cupboard at the time. You can substitute the raisins for golden raisins, you can use figs, dates, whatever you have to hand. But the one key ingredient that you need is that alcohol. A good rum or a good brandy will make all the difference. What I also really love about this recipe is that it doesn't take months of advanced preparation. You can make this on the day, on the morning, and you can cook them in the evening. Or you can leave it overnight to soak up all that lovely fruit juice and alcohol. So it's perfect for us last minute Christmas bakers that want to produce something absolutely gorgeous and festive, but we don't have a ton of time. Nothing to me screams Christmas like these little festive treats. Let's go ahead and jump into that ingredients list. To make your mince pie mincemeat filling, you need 50 grams of butter, two large apples peeled and chopped into chunks, 100 grams of chopped figs, 100 grams of chopped dates, 120 grams of mixed peel, the zest and juice of a large orange, 70 grams of dried cranberries, 70 grams of dried currants, 70 grams of raisins, and about 40 grams of light or dark brown sugar. You'll also need 80 milliliters of rum, and brandy or the full amount of either, 250 mils of unsweetened apple juice, a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon, half a teaspoon of freshly ground nutmeg, a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger, a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves and a quarter teaspoon of salt. If you're like me and you only had whole cloves in your cupboard then take a pestle and mortar and grind them up, it works a treat. All we're going to do now is add all the ingredients into a large saucepan and give them a good mix up. Now what we want to do is bring that fruity mixture to a boil over medium heat. Make sure you keep stirring for the first few minutes and then as the mixture starts to break down, the alcohol burns off and all those juices get absorbed, you can reduce the heat to medium low and simmer that mincemeat filling. When it's done, you'll see that almost all of that liquid has evaporated. At that point, you can remove it from the heat and let it cool completely. To make your pastry, you'll need 200 grams of plain flour, 20 grams of caster sugar, four to five tablespoons of ice cold water, and 125 grams of really cold unsalted butter. The key to making this pastry buttery and flaky is to make sure you work quickly and keep all your ingredients cool. All I've done here is given the flour and sugar a quick pulse together before adding the extra cold butter which I've allowed to cool in the fridge for about 30 minutes. Gently pulse all the ingredients together for about 15 seconds until all that butter is starting to be incorporated into the flour and you end up with something that looks a little bit like breadcrumbs. At this point you can start to add your water, very slowly and very carefully. Start with 3 tablespoons and pulse it up and if you need to add more that's okay. It's easier to add than to take away once you've added too much. You want to add just enough water so that the pastry dough starts to come together in your hand if you squeeze gently. This bit was a little bit tricky when I first tried it myself. Turn the dough out onto cling film and start to bring it together until it forms a ball. The aim is to handle it as little as possible. Once you've formed that ball of dough, separate into two and chill in the fridge for 30 to 60 minutes. Just before you're ready to start rolling out and preparing your mince pies, preheat your oven to 175 degrees for a fan oven and at this point you can lightly grease your muffin tin and lightly flour your work surface as well. Before you remove your pastry from the fridge in preparation for rolling out, make sure that the cutter that you have is the right size. You want it to be just slightly larger than your muffin tin. I really like this scallop cutter because it makes a really nice edge on your mince pies. When it's time to roll your pastry out, roll from the centre outwards and make quarter turns with each roll. For me, this pastry turns out a lot better when it's rolled thinly. Roll it out to about half a centimetre thick. This allows for quicker baking time and also makes for a really light mince pie. 
Again, the goal with this pastry is to work quickly so that the pastry stays cold. So work with half the dough at a time. While you're working with one half, leave the other half in the fridge. After laying your pastry bases down into the muffin tin, prick the base with a fork to make sure that no air bubbles appear and you get an evenly baked pastry. Give the mincemeat a good stir to make sure everything is well incorporated and add one tablespoon of the mixture into each pastry case. Be careful not to overfill. If they are overfilled, you risk the juices seeping out and creating what Mary Berry would call a soggy bottom. With the leftover pastry from rolling out your pastry cases, it's time to make the little toppings. Personally, I think using a little Christmas themed cookie cutter does the job perfectly. But if you don't have these to hand, you can make a full lid by using a circular cookie cutter. Before you pop them in the oven, give them a milk or an egg wash just to allow them to brown up that extra little bit. Pop them in the oven to bake for 15 to 20 minutes and pop all your remaining mincemeat filling into a jar which you can keep in the fridge or the freezer for a couple of months. Once the mince pies have slightly browned, remove them from the oven. Allow them to cool in the muffin tin for a couple of minutes before transferring them to cool on a wire rack. You can see that these pastries don't overly brown. That's the way you want them, a really light golden color. Sprinkle with a dusting of icing sugar and you have yourself the perfect, ultimate, traditional festive treat. <laughs>